Hi, welcome back to Space Thoughts. In episode 33 of Space Thoughts, uh, one, of the, one of the first videos I did this year, we talked about the PRC filing a complaint with the UN over two alleged conjunctions that almost caused a collision with their space station uh, in low Earth orbit. Now, uh, I'm gonna, I'll, put the, I'll put a link to that video at the end of this uh, video here so you can go back and look at it if you want. But back then, basically, I was, you know, I, I discussed went through their complaint, discussed it, and basically they were using Article 5 of the Outer Space Treaty to make this complaint, which I thought was absurd to say the least. Um, what happened is the United States did have diplomatic, apparently had diplomatic contacts with Beijing about this, but on the January 28th, they also filed, made a filing to the General Assembly, basically pushing back and refuting this, and, and, and all, but it's basically a rebuttal to uh, the PRC's complaint. And again, I'm going to frame all this again. I talked about lawfare a lot, and I, how I believed in this original complaint was nothing but a lawfare move. And as I'll show you in a few minutes, this response this rebuttal is a very good um, lawfare defense against the uh, against this complaint. And I think it was a very good move. So I'm going to share this screen now. I'm going to show you the, the actual. There we go. This was filed on January 28th of this year to basically directly to the General Assembly, not to any of the, any of the committees or the, the subcommittees um, directly. So, because this is basically where the uh, the PRC filed theirs and they were making a direct complaint or what I call a temper tantrum running to the teacher with to the uh, Secretary General. So basically is State Department came back and responded to this basically. And they make their, this basically consists of several major points. First, the US basically reiterated the, the Outer Space Treaty, the Treaty on Principles Governing the Activities of States and the Exploration and Use of Outer Space, including the Moon and other celestial bodies, and actually reiterated its commitments to international cooperation. And it basically, and, and in this section, there's basically a recitation of the duties and principles under the Outer Space Treaty, how the U.S. has upheld its obligations to the Outer Space Treaty. Because remember, one of the obligations, one of the complaints in the PRC's uh, filing was that the U.S. was violating the Outer Space Treaty. The U.S. also takes another step and create, that basically comes in, goes to this idea of sustainability. And then and back in 2018, there was this, there was this group that uh, came up with 21 guidelines for the continued sustainable use of outer space. And there's actually, link, there's actually links to that in this document. So I'll have a link to this document in the description so you can actually go and look at these. But the idea is US saying, look, we signed, we were one of, uh, we're, we're one of the nations, one of the states that signed on to this idea of, you know, these non-legal, non-binding, non these non-legal guidelines, and we have our commitment. And we, we understand that sustainability of outer space is important, and we are committed to that. And it, and it lists several of the guidelines in particular. Uh, guideline B1, provide updated information, contact information, and share information on space object and orbital events, improve accuracy of orbital data on space objects, and enhance the practice and utility of sharing orbital information on space objects, promote the collection, sharing, and dissemin dissemination of space debris monitoring information, perform conjunction assessment during all orbital phases of controlled flight, design and, and operation of space objects regardless of their physical and operational characteristics. So fundamentally, basically, the PRC was saying, look, we had the, these two events where involving Starlink satellites, which are registered to the, United, to the United States. And we had to take action in order to avoid a collision and endanger our Taikonauts or astronauts. Basically the international term is astronauts. U.S. comes back and say, look, we, 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 abide by the, we abide by the aerospace treaty. We promote this idea of sustainability. And all, by the way, some of these, here's some of the guidelines within those long-term, those, those sustainability guidelines that we signed on to. And guess what? We, we actually do a lot of this. And I think I mentioned that a little bit in the video. Uh, and of course, the U.S. ensures all nations to abide by their commitments and implement the above guidelines. So that was a little bit of a push to that. That, that this is this is this is how things operate in the diplomatic environment. You always give a nudge, saying, "Well, we're 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 doing this, and we encourage you to do it as well." Um, ensuring space flight safety. So this goes into the meat of the complaint. 
And basically, the uh, the United States basically says it's committed to working with all nations to sustain the outer space environment for the benefit of all humanity, ensuring timely warning of potential hazardous space operations and enhancing spaceflight safety. And it brings up uh, uh, its United you know, Space Priorities Framework was re re released on December 1st of last year. And basically saying, which within that framework is saying, the United States will continue to share space situational awareness information and provide basic space flight safety and services to all space operators. Now, this is where it goes into the heart of the Chinese complaint. Chinese saying there was a conjunction and the US basically says, look, We've already made, we, we've already had these commitments. We didn't see anything, um, and but you know there really isn't there really isn't an issue and that 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 you know that, that as the PRC complained about. So as part of this key a part of this commitment, the government of the United States conducts screenings of all active space objects for potential or orbit collisions, and this is true. This is true. That you know the, the U.S. Space Command in particular is very active, and in particular the 18th Space Control Squadron uses what we call the space fence to monitor these things. And spacetrack.org is actually a website that anybody can register on and go. But in the, in the event that there's going to be a potential collision, they get on the horn to the appropriate authorities and say, look, there's a problem here. So in cases where a potential collision hazard is calculated, the United States Space Command through the United States Space Force's 18th Space Control Squadron provides relevant analysis to all, test, all effective space operators, including to China, to support their decisions on collision avoidance maneuvers. In other words, this is, some, this is an active thing that the, US, or that the U.S. does for not only domestic uh, consumers, but also for the international community as a whole. And they actually, there are actually these, space, these data sharing agreements. Since November 2014, the United States has provided space flight safety information to the government of China, including emergency notifications of high-risk collision hazards being crewed in robotic Chinese spacecraft and other space objects. In other words, this is this has been an ongoing practice, and I believe this there is a bilateral data sharing agreement with the People's Republic of China, saying, "Look, we've been doing this all along for you, for you and uh, this isn't something. This is something new. This isn't something we, you know, we we we've yet to conjure. This is something that's been actually active." Pointing to it, and the specific instances cited in the note verbal from from China to the Secretary General. The United States Space Command did not estimate a significant probability of collision between the China Space Station and the reference United States spacecraft. In other words, the two Starlink act. In other words, according to our data you know, and our calculations, there was no danger of a conjunction or a collision, therefore no, no notification. However, if it had been, it probably, they, probably, they would have probably gotten on the horn and said, look, there's a, to both the PRC or the, the Chinese National uh, Space Agency, in particular, and start and, and SpaceX said, "Look, you guys going to have you guys could potentially collide. You got to take some action." But because the activities did not meet the threshold of established emergency collision criteria, emergency notifications were not warranted in either case. In other words, uh, by 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 the standards set by the uh, by by Space Command by Space Force, there was really no danger of collision. Therefore, no emergency notifications were warranted. And again, China. PRC has access to this data all the time through spacetrack.org and through, I believe, I believe they do have a data sharing agreement with uh, U.S. Space Command. If there had been a significant probability of collision involving the China Space Station, the United States would have provided a close approach notification directly to the designated Chinese point of contact. But the United States is unaware of any contact or attempted contact by China with the United States Space Command, the operators of Starlink 1095 and Starlink 2305, or any other United States entity to share information or concerns about the state data incidents prior to the note for Bob from China to the Secretary General. So in other words, if there had been a probability of a, of a conjunction in either of these two instances, the U.S. would have contacted the Chinese point of contact. On the other hand, not, nobody, nobody in the PRC attempted to contact either the U.S. or SpaceX. And, and really, the, the point of contact would be uh, a contact in the United States government because SpaceX is basically under the jurisdiction of the United States. But China, never, the PRC never did that. First thing they did was they ran to the teacher, basically, in my opinion, uh, through a temper tantrum and tried to create an international incident uh, through 
using the Article 5 of the RCP3, which again, as I explained in my other video, is I thought was absurd. So in other words, in my opinion, this was a big lawfare tactic to embarrass the United States and, you know, to make us make, make the U.S. look like a bad guy, make us look like irresponsible behavior, you know, irresponsible players in the outer space environment. Um, then the third main point, information sharing for human space flight safety. The United States believes that detailed consultation on measures to reduce the risk of collision between United States space objects and the human space flight activity of other nations should be conducted directly through bilateral channels to facilitate efficient and timely sharing information and coordination of potentially urgent responses. In other words, if you, if you think there's going to be a problem or you, you encountered a problem, don't, run, go, don't go running to the teacher to tattle. Basically, there are direct contacts, bilateral contacts to, to come in and talk to, you know, basically this is concern, you need to address it. And some, and basically the, con, and as I mentioned before, uh, spacetrack.org, uh, that is a place where all this, all, all this uh, orbital data is basically available. All what they call TLEs is, is available. But, in, you know, so in other words, the whole idea is U.S. came in saying, look, we're, we, 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 we abide by the, the principles of the Outer Space Treaty. We believe in sustainability. We've adopted these print. We, we've adopted these ideas of the sustainable uh, guidelines for sustainability. These these guidelines for sustainability, in particular, we know we have we presently do, and we will continue to do, and we encourage other nations to do. And three, there was no there was no real issue no by. by that we could identify, and for the you know the, the PRC government instead of you know raising concerns directly with the United States, decided to run to the teacher and basically tattle on us and say we were, the U.S. was not doing you know was was basically endangering its taikonauts or astronauts, how whatever you want to say. So, what does this what does this all mean in, in in a sense? Is like I said, this was a as I noticed in the last video, this was lawfare. Basically, it's using in the international body like the UN and using the Outer Space Treaty pretty badly, in my opinion, to try and create an international incident, stir up trouble uh, and, and such. And I really, I really thought it was, kind of, you know, and, and I, there's been some speculation by, by other commenters, which might be true that, you know, this was designed to take some heat off the Russian Federation for their ASAT demonstration back in, um, back in November 5th, on November 15th. Um, well, that you know, that's all well and good. I think honestly, I think the Russians weathered that pretty well politically. But I think this is this is a stick in the eye for the Russian Federation to, uh, for the Ch PRC to cover the Russian Federation, and you're going to see that happening a lot. In fact, uh, just in Beijing uh, at the Olympics, um, when when uh, Mr. Putin and, and Mr. and Xi Jinping met, you know, they basically had this reunited front again, you know, against NATO expansion, which happens to be a pet peeve right now, or a narrative that uh, Mr. Putin is pressing with the situation, you know, brewing in Europe and Ukraine in particular. So in other words, this is all lawfare. And, you know, I kind of jump on the idea of, you know, this whole idea of endangering astronauts with space activities, because basically the PRC back in 2007 uh, tested an ASAT that blew up a weather satellite that created a massive amount of debris and uh, something that the International Space Station has to dodge quite often. So, I mean, it's a matter of, you know, I hate to use the word hypocrisy because nowadays it's just overused, but it's, you know, really call it, it's, it's just really ludicrous to say that. And on top of that, you know, we, we have this issue, we have this event in geosynchronous orbit where the PRC demonstrated a capability, demonstrated, tested, I don't know what it is, but basically they moved one of their dead satellites out of, out of geo, not, and, you know, slightly moved it out. And it kind of really interesting, impressive capability but you know, in my opinion, it probably could. That probably was not a debris remo removal demonstration. Probably a uh, a test or a demonstration of an anti-satellite capability. And there's probably there might be a little bit. I might do a video and elaborate on that a little bit more. But all in all, what I'm saying is the PRC has nothing to complain about here. They used the law bad. They abused the law badly. I think and in and uh, in the UN with this with this incident. And again, it's it, it's all lawfare. And, you know, and I think this is a real important example of how potent lawfare can be or how significant it can be. This, this is actually a real thing because people say, well, you know, this is make believe. It doesn't really matter. This matters here. And fortunately, the, in this case, the United States pushed back very hard and, you, and actually used lawfare 
uh, to push back and to defend against a lawfare action. Um, in my opinion, we could have, you know, it, I, I think we have to be a little bit more aggressive. Uh, I was watching a video, the uh, I think it was the other day, where they based, where, where the MDA, the Missile Defense Agency, was talking about the that the that in, intercepts in the United Arab Emirates, and you know, and uh, one of the comments was, well, in this case, defense won. The defense won. Um, I'm all about, you know, defense Defense is great, but in the case of lawfare, you can't always be on the defensive. Sometimes you got to go on the offensive. And I think we missed a really great opportunity uh, with the no November 15th ASAI demonstration, because I really think, you know, based on my analysis that, you know, uh, of that incident, I think, I, I do believe the Russian Federation violated the Outer Space Treaty. Um, if you want to learn more about that, I talk about it in my, in, in my briefing letter. Uh, but anyways, I think you're going to see a lot more of this. It's going to, there's going to be a, this is, this is hybrid warfare. This is a regular warfare. This is an asymmetric warfare. I think you're going to see a lot more of this in the future. Um, and I th hope we keep on our toes. Again, you know, uh, law isn't all about, all, in the diplomatic arena, isn't always about getting people together. It's also about using law and diplomacy as a, as a weapon of war. Uh, and to that effect, you know, you know, people talk about, well, we get, we want peace. We, we're really at war right now. And I think this, this incident here definitely demonstrates that. So that's all I have for this video. I uh, hope you're safe. I hope you're healthy. And we'll talk to you next time.